Good morning. So in this video, I want to help people to prepare for spiritual warfare. And the way to go about spiritual warfare is to have a first time. Uh, first thing is discerning. To discern um, things that are off with you. When you feel wrapped up or you feel like you're behind um, the ball, so to speak. When you want to get from A to B, but you're always feeling stagnant, you always feel held back, right? I want to help people to understand that it's spiritual and there's a spirit there, but we can break those spirits because God gave us dominion and authority to trample on scorpions and snakes and give us victory. Um, you know, but we can't be, um, we can't be lazy Christians. In other words, you have the tools and resources to be overcomers and conquerors. And now you just have to utilize those, those tools because it doesn't happen automatic. Right? Only because you go through hard times, right? It doesn't, uh, an automatic isn't put into place to get you up out of that hole. You have to pray yourself out. You have to, you have to worship. Sometimes it's worshiping your way out. Sometimes it's fasting your way out. Sometimes, you know, but, but one thing that my wife used to do a lot of uh, the time back in the day was she would have other people pray for her, right? And everything was about other people's faith and, and she wasn't engaged, she wasn't connected, right? And God rebuked my wife for that because, you know, she was just a lazy Christian. She was a bench warmer. She was a, seated at the church, you know, on Sundays, hallelujah, with the arms up and it's not that on Monday she was sinning or anything like that, like, you know, how, how the story goes. But it was more so like she wasn't engaged with, the, with, with God, right? And God was feeling left out. So God would get my, my wife's attention and tell her, hey, listen, you know, I want you to read, get in the word. I want you to, you know, like, give me attention. Give me time. You know, let me prune you. Let me, let me, let me help you to grow and be fruitful, you know, and multiply. You know, we do that. We become fruitful and multiply when we're connected to the vine. But if you're not connected to Jesus Christ being the vine, then it's going to be very hard for you to be an overcomer or more than a conqueror as he promised you that you were. And so the title, being a Christian, is um, it's like that's faith, right? You get the title of a Christian by faith. But Jesus said in the Bible, faith without works is dead. So you need to apply your, your title, which is being a Christian, you're saved by grace. But now, on top of that, now it's like, okay, now you need to be developed. You need to be processed. You need to get your, your, your boots on and start to walk the trail that God wants you to walk, right? He talked about a narrow road. He wants you to go into a destination. He wants you to be prudent, you know, um, I'll just pray about things you know like I, I i made a video yesterday about praying without ceasing very important that people have an understanding that you have a role to play in this whole thing and it's not just about other people it's very easy to watch me on social media and think oh he's doing it yeah you know i get comments like you're a true man of god and I, and, and and although that is the authentic truth about who, my identity it's like it begs the question like i hope you are too I hope that you're doing this too because people forget that when we get to heaven some people are going to say Lord to God to Jesus they're going to call him Lord and I hope that this strikes you to the core to make you want to change and make a change in your life because you know the Bible is a final authority of God and if God's giving you a heads up about something it's because he wants you to get right he doesn't want you to be one of those people that falls into a uh, temptation or he or you go astray he doesn't want you to be these people that are outcasted from his presence he doesn't want that for you it's not his his will see he's made provision for you to be part of the flock even if you've messed up a thousand times he wants to make you right and reconcile you but wait i said all that to say this so then you know god's will you know god's heart but our heart needs to be right his, God's heart is right already. Our heart needs to be made like God's heart. And what that means is that there's going to be people in the Bible that call him Lord, but they didn't live like he was Lord. Jesus said in the Bible, why do you call me Lord, but you don't do what I say? You know, um, 
I want people to understand, have an understanding in their mind, and let let the understanding of the mind trickle down to the heart. That God wants covenant with you. He wants relationship with you. He wants um, intimacy with you, right? And out of these places of intimacy, fruit comes automatically. So it's not about white knuckling and, and, and making works happen. It's not about the works. It is about intimacy. It is about knowing God. It's just that when you do that, a byproduct of that is works come with it. So it's like, it's like walking. A byproduct of walking is getting to your destination. You see? You're walking already. You're doing the, the appropriate works to get there, right? And then you get to your destination. So, I just feel compelled to tell everyone that God is coming soon. And that He is coming back for a bride, right? Bride of Christ. And so, it's more so on you to develop that relationship with the Lord. And it's not too late. That's the beauty of this whole thing. But... I always say to everyone, I say, you can gamble with a lot of stuff on this earth, you know? You can make a deal that goes sour, and you can rebound. You can do all kinds of things in this earth, and take a shot, and miss, and, and, and get back on the horse and keep going. But don't gamble with your soul. Don't be one of those that gambles with your soul. Because your soul, we're talking about eternity, the stakes are so high. That quite frankly we're dealing with hell and heaven and we're dealing with eternity all of forever in one of the two places and so you want to slam dunk this you don't want to shoot it from the three-point yard hoping that it goes hoping that it goes in you don't want to you don't want to do that with your faith you want to slam dunk your, your your shot knowing that it's going in because you want to see yourself, it's an investment to your soul. So all that, all of that lethargic, uh, lethargic feeling of, oh, I don't feel like it, or I don't know, or this or that, you know, tell me what you want me to teach you. Tell me what you're struggling with so that you, we can get you rolling. But it's like these petty little excuses or reasons that we tell ourselves that we can't do something and they're very, very like shallow, okay? And Nobody here is better than anybody, so it's not about that. But it is about it is about putting I like this analogy, boots on the floor and, and move. Because God called us to be soldiers, he called us to be warriors. And that's why you go through spiritual warfare. It's because you're a soldier. But he's like, don't worry about it, because I'm with you. So we're gonna annihilate this kingdom. Right, that kingdom of the enemy. So, you know, witchcraft and all that kind of stuff. It, it doesn't stand a chance against God, against the blood of the blood of Jesus. The disciples in the Bible said that we overcame the devil by the blood of Jesus Christ and the word of our testimony. So, wherever you find a, a testimony, somebody, somebody telling you. Uh, of something that God did for them Listen closely Because there's nuggets In that testimony that can set you free And then also You get to know how the enemy practices And how he's conniving And he sweeps through And he, he, he tracks people And takes them down When you get to know people's testimony Of how they got bound In the first place It's usually When they, they started to become secular or they became dry in the spirit when they became stagnant when they when they weren't focusing on the lord as much the enemy sweeps in at that point because they're not practicing what they need to practice to overcome the enemy which is prayer which is intimacy with the lord you know intercession worship fasting etc you know it's not about it's not about being paranoid it's not about any of that but it is about being vigilant as the bible says be vigilant be sober-minded have an understanding heart understand that you do have a, you do have an adversary you do have an enemy and he does devour people and don't be one of those that he devours if you can help it help it 
And so make those declarations over your life right now. Start to pray that God sets you free of any, any hostage holds that the enemy has you under, believing a lie. Start to ask God to give you the truth in the place of the lie, and the truth will set you free. Start asking God to burn off every every wicked uh, thing that, that's in your life, whether it be a contract, a vow, whether it be uh, something that you've made when you were a child, your parents made. Certain things, certain people need to be delivered from generational curses. Certain people need to be delivered from addictions, all kinds of stuff, right? That's passed down from generation to generation. And you do that through intercession, which is a heavy form of prayer. And intercession is a heavy form of prayer because you're attacking whatever it is that's a mountain in your life and you're not letting go like a pit bull, you're grabbing on you, you're not letting go until it releases you. That's intercession. When you want something to leave your life, you need to be a doer of the word. You need to go after it and you need to not be a person that lets go until you see what you want to see. And you do have it in you because if somebody came between you and your child or you and your mother, you would see all this tenacity that's built up inside of you to fight the good fight, to get what, what belongs to you, right? So you have all this inside of you, just use it for the kingdom of God, right? Start to fight the good fight of faith. And I tell you all of this because there's so much that hangs in the balance that, that, that really it benefits you to not ride the fence. It benefits you to get involved. It benefits you to get hot instead of lukewarm. It benefits you to really practice, you know, the things that you say you believe. It benefits you. So let's get busy in Jesus' name and start to become everything that God created you to be, which was more than a conqueror. God bless you.